And hey folks, me again, back again with another video today. I'm going to be reacting to good guitarist and terrible bands. So hope you enjoy the video. Like, subscribe. Follow me on Amino on TikTok and Discord. And in the chit chat, let's begin, shall we? easier to use and is trackable. Use my link in the description to get an additional discount on everything on extra websites. Somehow people are still using wallets. Sometimes a band stands out because of how great the guitarist is, but on the flip side of that, sometimes a great guitarist stands out because of how bad everyone else is in that same band. It has happened more times than you think in music history. I posted on Twitter the question, who is an amazing guitarist in a not so amazing band? I asked this question through two different posts and after many suggestions, many of which were suggesting the same person, it's clear that there are some bands out there that are known for being bad, but people still acknowledge how good of a guitarist they have. Let's cut right to it. There's an obvious name that comes to most rock fans' minds when talking about a talented guitarist in a bad band. Wes Borland will forever be the face oh, of the got, idea. Oh, got, the whole notion of great right. musicians and bad bands has a face, and it's the crazy made-up face of Wes Borland. I cannot stress enough how many people responded with Wes Borland when I posted that question. Saying Wes is a killer guitarist is an understatement, and he undeniably is the best musician in the new metal punching bag, Limp Bizkit. To be honest, I could point to several other members of Limp Bizkit about being way too talented for that band. Minus someone... But Wes stands out big time for being extremely creative in riff writing and having a massive amount of charisma to match his skill. Yeah, he always looks insane on stage with the intention of being weird, but Limp Bizkit would have been a thousand times worse without Wes Borland. Case in point, when Wes Borland left the band for a while, then Limp Bizkit made this atrocity. I don't want to hear about it's a guilty pleasure for you diehard Bizkit fans either. This is creepy, filthy trash. Also keep in mind, Borland would go on to make Black Light Burns, which is fine. It's totally fine, guys. Further proving that Wes was not ever and never was the reason Limp Bizkit was so... Ugh. I stand by two notions. Number one, replace Fred Durst and Limp Bizkit and that band would have been a thousand times better and the music would not have aged like milk. Number two, take Wes Borland and put him in another big new metal band and that band would have excelled a thousand times more back in that time period. I mean, really think back in the day how many new metal bands back then would have been so much stronger with someone like Wes Borland. I can't even say he was wasted potential on Limp Bizkit because Wes still got in some iconic riffs at a time where that was all the rage. Proof that an amazing guitarist can absolutely stand out no matter how much of a doofus the singer is when he's doing the new metal hokey pokey. That's exactly what Roland is and you know it. Regardless of the band he's mostly known for, Wes has a massive amount of respect from the music world altogether. That talent outshined the early 2000s shenanigans of Limp Bizkit. Exactly. And while Borland has returned back to the lineup with Limp Bizkit and they do perform together live and they keep promising new music. Promising? Threatening? However you see it. What still is held in higher regard. Along the same timeline in the late 90s and early 2000s, on the flip side of new metal was post-grunge, and on the flip side of Limp Bizkit would have been what Creed. Funny. Many people also suggested Mark uh, Creed, I can frankly take or leave. Band, and... Yeah, to be honest, I still stand by that Creed's debut at my own prison is solid, but as time went on, it's pretty clear that Mark Tremonti's skill was not being displayed well with each following exactly. Creed album. It's a similar situation where I can point to the rest of the band members in Creed behind the front man with how talented they are. I mean, Scott Staff isn't even that awful, it's just that he went nutter butter crazy. Over time, Creed decayed into a joke with their music and lyrics, but Tremonti would continue I to succeed in other don't like Obama at all. with Phillips and Marshall, Tremonti would form Alter Bridge with Miles Kennedy, which is still a massive force in Rock. Over the last few years, Mark Tremonti started his own band named after himself, which is fine also. Mark Tremonti was more than able to break free from the bad stigma of Creed and do just fine while proving he's an amazing guitarist. One of my favorite stories about Mark Tremonti is that during an Alter Bridge show, he saw a fan front row air guitaring every single song during hmm. the set. Oh, that's Shows amazing. Over, Tremonti climbed down and gave the fan his own guitar. He played with wow. it tonight, saying, It's yours now. It's all yours. 
I just think that's awesome. I wanted to wow. put that story out. Is Creed great? Seems like a nice no, guy. They have more cheesy writing in Yarling than most people remember. Cheesy Is Mark writing. Tremonti great? Absolutely. He's proven that over decades now, and I truly believe he's not just seen <laughs> as the guitarist from Creed, but a musician who's been successful with every band or project he's been a part of. Another big name from that time period was Stain, and while I have made it very clear on this channel my thoughts about Stain, and especially Crabby Uncle Aaron, and how he really is not good someone who is criminally underrated and always in the shadow is mike Bushock, a great guitarist who never got to show off his potential in stain <laughs> wasted potential it. whether it was in the late 90s when stain was at least trying or later on when aaron lewis became more obsessed with whining and making sad boy post grunge mike exactly. Bushock was there along for the ride and when you see him perform live you know just how talented he is i've seen stained live twice and it was the second time at their big reunion show after five years of not playing together that i realized stain has loads of wasted talent behind crabby uncle aaron mike Bushock came to work that night and was giving it his all to the side of aaron lewis who had his hands in his pockets and barely looked at the crowd Bushock deserves more recognition mike is also a member of the supergroup santa sonia and i'm not not saying Santa Sonia is a bad band, but I do feel it's another case of the man not being able to display his skill to full potential. He just doesn't get to. Along with all that, one thing that Mushok has done over the years is make playthroughs of his big stain songs and other music as well, teaching others how to play, a guitarist and a teacher. He deserves more credit, but not as long as that lifeless curmudgeon is center stage and riding emotionless gribble. Okay, you know what? Enough Aaron Lewis bashing. I'm sorry. Many people out there will still defend Limp Bizkit, Creed, Stained as all good bands due to the nostalgia and loving butt rock, loving the song Nookie, whatever. What about a band no one defends as being good and has a great guitarist? The first name that comes to my mind on that one is Buck Cherry. For most of Buck Cherry's disgusting career, Keith Nelson was there and way too good for that band. Even at Buck Cherry's best, this band was still awful. What's crazy is that in even the awful music with some of the worst singing ever and impossibly dumb lyrics, Keith Nelson stood out like a shining light with his guitar work. I don't recommend going back to their most successful album, 15. Seriously, do not do that. It needs to be pointed out that not only was Keith Nelson the only person worth hearing on that entire album, but it's shocking he was part of a band that bad to begin with. Most of his career was with Buck Cherry until Nelson finally had a good idea and left the band due to Josh Tuss's direction of the band Buck Cherry. Though it begs the question, why didn't he leave sooner? Buck Cherry is still rolling along, remixing their one hit song to somehow make it worse, but without Keith Nelson. Go back in time further during the hair metal days, and you'll find a ton of amazing, classically trained guitarists who were way too talented for the way too they were playing for and the cheesy music they were writing. Cheesy music, it was the 80s. Deal with it, hipsterella. Way too good for that music. A great example is Joey Allen of Warrant. This is a classically oh, trained, about highly skilled guitarist who could shred with the best of them and has done and... some deep cut work tracks but is known along with the rest of the band for singing cherry pie He's minus warrant guitarist that's his life's most known work he is better than what warrant is known for geez warrant is better than what warrant is known for the guitar work alone proves that another example from the 80s metal days is minus Oscar striper striper really listen to some of striper's greatest hits and you'll never hear anyone complain about the guitar work ever the lyrics are cheesier than christian children's tv shows and it's hard not to chuckle when you listen to striper but it's not because of oz fox One it was the 80s deal with it would be the trash core scene and until it definitely counts as trash core somehow an awful inexcusable band like attila has a guitarist as good as chris link why? I still have no idea. When you hear Attila, which I don't recommend, there is only one standout quality in the group, and that is when guitarist Chris Link is allowed to play uninterrupted and without shrieking crybaby vocals ruining it. His ability is top-notch. Link is versatile and competent, and it's just buried in noise disguised as angry tough boy music. It's a shame, too, because if you were to put him in a different metalcore band, Link would flourish, but I feel exactly. like his talent the guy is beyond would wasted up. because he plays alongside human refuse. Yeah, I don't care at this point what Attila and Trashcore scene fans think about me. Franz <laughs> what is what about redeemable garbage with absolutely nothing to offer. Chris Link sticks with him, though, for some reason. 
unfortunately. I do want to point out Sad that line. many of the bands in this video I've talked about have several platinum selling albums and number one hits. You can't say they weren't successful, but it does go to show you that those bands discussed are usually now talked about negatively and not about how good their guitarist is. That sometimes is a footnote and it's a shame. I'll end the video asking the question for everyone watching. Who do you think is a great guitarist in a bad band? Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, follow me on Amino, TikTok, and Discord, and God bless y'all, and I'll see you next video.